So now we know what is the predicate logic statement. The next step is how you're going to express the predicate logic statement. Uh, like your proportional logic statement, we have the proportion and the connectives and all. Similarly, uh, for predicate logic statement, there are certain alphabets and terms. So we'll see what is a term in a predicate logic statement. So the alphabets over here in predicate logic statements is all, this, all the things that comes under your proportional logic statement along with that. And alphabet in a predicate logic statements are you will have connectives and not all the connectives we have negation and or implies for all and that exists. There is no bidirectional connection over here. And uh, instead of a bidirectional connection, we have your equity function. Equity function is denoted like this. And constants, what are the constants? As you should, true and false are the constants of your predicate logic statement and along with that variables. Variables will be like x1, x2 and all. And with this, you will be having certain predicates and the predicates is going to take this variable as a um, predicates in the functions that is going to take this variables as a arguments. Okay, so the normal form for your predicate logic like a uh, bicot norm, uh, by code normal form BCNF for your uh, predicate logic is given as a term can be expressed as all the variables, all your constants. Constants are nothing but your true and false. And you'll be having set of functions with your T1, T2, all Tn as a functions. All the terms, T1, T2, Tn are the terms as a function. And a formula can be written as, a formula in a predicate logic statement can be written as either a single nullary predicate function or a predicate function with certain terms. Okay. Or a equity function can be given as t1 comma t2. This is your equity function, or either a single true or a single false is also a formula, and negation alpha. Okay, your formula is alpha. Alpha is your formula. Okay, so and uh, t is your term. A negation of alpha are alpha one and alpha two. Conjunction. Conjunction of two formulas, disjunction of two formulas, or using your implies of formula, and for all x of formula, there exists a x of a formula alpha. Okay, so these are all your by called normal form for function. Okay, so when uh, when you want to know like the problem is uh, uh, given predicate logic statement is a well formed formula or not, you have to follow this. Uh, by code normal form structure okay now i'll uh, take one uh, example um something like this for all x q of x implies r of x and um, p of y implies q of x some predicate logic statement like this okay so now in this statement now this x actually is for all x. This x is actually denoted for this x and this x. This is called binding. Okay, this x is binded with this x and this x. Okay, whereas your y is free and this x is also free. Okay, so this is called a binding variables. Okay, when there is an universal quantifier, we should know the scope of the universal quantifier. So you have to mention like this for all x is applicable only that in the braces okay so this q of x is going to all the x and for this r of x is also for all x but coming to the outside portion this q of x not is not binded to all x okay so this is these two are called binded variables and these two are called your free variables okay free and binded variables and how can you construct a pass tree for it a normal pass tree structure you should know the priorities Okay, binding priority works like for all and that exists has the highest priority and then your negation and or implies. So this is your binding priority. Okay, so for all uh, there exists and negation has the equal priority and then or has the next priority implies as the highest priority. 
and how can you solve this mark like when i want to solve this predicate logic statement like uh, in case if i want to draw a past tree for this how can i draw like i have implies and and into this formula so which one will solve first and right this has the higher priority so first i'll be making r of x p of y and these two are minded using your and function then implies let me give it over here implies with q of x and this and it is then binded with another implies the highest one with the q of x and overall it is i think i need this piece okay this implies as the highest one okay and uh, this is quantified i'm sorry see here your quantifier actually makes the difference okay so here we have done for all all this statement and that is and for all x and which one is binded with for all x this statement this portion is binded with for all x okay so here you have the binding priority and then this is then implied with q of ex okay so this is how we draw a past tree Uh, we should know how it is actually working. Then only we'll understand this past tree structure. Okay, so which one has a higher priority and which has to be done in a single statement and all. Okay, so now, um, so all done, right? So which one is like you have for all x? So and this branch all consists of x. These are all your binded variable, and these are your free variables, which is not binded by any universal quantifier. Okay, now when I want to make a substitution for it, okay, like your validation in case of your predicate proportional logic, we apply your true and false statement, right? Here, when I want to make a substitution, and I love to make a substitution only for this free variable. I can replace this x with some t naught, y with with a t one or t two something. Okay, so I can replace the free variable alone with the predicate, alone with the term. Okay, I'm not allowed to touch this bounded variable, so that is how a substitution is made in in terms of your first order logic. Okay, thank you.